In this tutorial, we're going to look at adding mixed fractions. Now, a mixed fraction is a fraction greater than 1. So, for example, 2 and a half is a mixed fraction. 1 half on its own would be a simple fraction, but 2 and a half, because it's got a whole number, the 2, is a mixed fraction. So, let's add that to a simple fraction. Uh, let's add it to 3 fifths. Now when we're adding just simple fractions, we just look at the fraction part, because we don't have the whole number there. But here we've got the 2 as well, and actually the technique is very similar to when you're adding simple fractions. What you need to do is to begin with just ignore the 2, the two whole numbers over here, and simply add the simple fractions together. So let's add 1 half plus three fifths and we'll come back and pick up our two, our whole number over here once we've done this part of the calculation. So to add one half and three fifths as you may have seen in the other video adding simple fractions we need to make our denominators the same. The denominators, the numbers on the bottom, the two and the five and to do that in this calculation we have to find the lowest common multiple of two and five. Now the lowest common multiple and you can see this in a different video if you're not sure how to find the lowest common multiple. Uh, but assuming you do know how to do that, you'll know that the lowest common multiple of 2 and 5 is 10. So we need to multiply the 2 by 5 to get to 10, and the 5 by the 2 to get to 10, to make sure we've got the same denominator on both sides. Now remember with fractions, whatever we do to the bottom, we must, al we must always do to the top as well. So we have, we've, done, we've multiplied the denominator by 5 here, and we must also multiply the numerator by 5. And the same on this part of the calculation, we've multiplied the denominator by 2, the 5 by the 2, so we must all also multiply the 3 by 2, multiply our numerator by 2. So if we then see the calculation through on both sides, we have 1 times 5 on the top for this side to give us 5, and 2 times 5 on the bottom to give us 10. And then we're going to add that to the part on the right hand side. And we've done 3 times 2 for our numerator to give us 6. And 5 times 2 for our denominator, the number on the bottom, to give us 10. And then we can complete this part of the calculation by adding the top part, the 6 plus the 5, to give us 11 on top. And remember, we always keep the denominator the same, so we have 11 tenths. So we have 11 tenths, which we now need to convert from a top-heavy fraction into a mixed fraction. So that becomes 1 and 1 tenth. And now we must remember now to go back to the beginning of our calculation. Remember the two we had to begin with. And this part's quite simple. You just now to bring you to bring in those two whole numbers and add that to our fraction here to give us a final answer of three and a tenth. Because one plus two, there are our whole numbers, one plus two gives us three, and we get three and one tenth as our final answer. So let's take a look at one more example of adding mixed fractions. And in this one, let's take 2 and 1 third, add 3 and 5 sixths. So again, to begin with, let's ignore our whole numbers. Let's ignore the 2 over here in our 2 and a third and our 3 and 3 and 5 sixths. And let's just get adding the fractions out the way first. So let's take 1 third and then let's add 5 sixths. So as usual, we need to make the denominators of both sides the same, and that involves multiplying the 3 by 2, so 
so we'll get the same denominator on this side as we do on this side. And remember, we must almost we must always time do the same to the top and the bottom with fractions. We almost do the same to our numerator and our denominator. So we've times our denominator by two. So we must always times the numerator by two. So we're now going to get a calculation where we have two denominators that are the same. So we'll have two over six. So we've got one times two on top and three times two on the bottom. And we're going to add that to our five sixths. And so we'll have two six plus five sixths. And two plus the five on the top gives us seven. And we keep our denominator the same, so our six underneath. So we've got seven sixths. Now we know that that equals, as a mixed fraction, one and one sixth. So we haven't quite got to the final answer yet. We're nearly there. We've got our fractions added, our one third plus our five sixths to give us one and one sixth. But now we must remember to add our two back in here and our three back in from here. So two plus three gives us five, doesn't it? The two plus three from our original calculation gives us five. And we need to add that back in to the one and one sixth that we've got here. So we'll then have five plus one to give us six whole numbers, six whole numbers, and the fraction stays the same. So we have six, six and one sixths. Rather than sixes, but that's our final answer. Six and one sixth.